So, Dr. Briggs, good to see you again, my friend. How, how are, are you? How I'm very well. How are you doing? Looks like you may well oh, be in, in Malta, is that, Wayne? Are you in Malta? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm at home. Yes, in my, in, my, in my office again, you can see all the, the great scores behind. I think we've been through this already, the different works that are, that are, that are behind me there. But it's wild. yeah, it's late. This time it's later now, it's 20 to midnight. And uh, so it's, I think it's something like 20 to 6 where you are. So but, I'm in, uh, I'm in uh, Ipswich in the colony of Massachusetts. And um, Ipswich, a beautiful town, We're actually where we used to live uh, for five years. And yeah, um, nice. in the Episcopal Church here, where as you can see, uh, I've just been doing a little bit of practice on that. There's a glorious organ by C.B. Fisk, uh, which was uh, built back in 1974. And, yeah. Uh, I won't play it now because it sounds terrible on Zoom. It's funny how Zoom, you know, for the, vi sound, yeah. the visuals is fantastic, but for the sound, it's, um, it's, uh, it's less than ideal. But anyway, there it is. We've actually had a beautiful week up in, in uh, Bar Harbor in Maine, which is, it's about five hours north of here and visiting with my 96 year old uh, uh, father-in-law, which has been oh. really lovely to see him. And you know, the temperatures were like in the mid seventies Fahrenheit and low humidity. It's been, it's rather like Cornwall actually, in a way. Yeah. Area of Maine, lots of, lots of sailing and lots of lobster okay. and clams and all this kind of thing. Wayne, what have you been doing then since we last spoke? Well, I, um, I mean, yeah, of course, the last time we spoke, of course, I was in Sicily, in, in, um, in Palermo. If you remember that, that huge storm, which is quite lovely. Massive storm. Massive it was. It was really apocalyptic, if you can really mm -hmm. see that. You know, really quite something. But anyway, I mean, we've since been back, um, as a family, we went back to, to, to Sicily in a short, a short little holiday, which is very nice. We went to places like Linguolosa to, you know, around, around the Etna area, and, you know, went to some fantastic, fantastic restaurants and, Really nice hotel. You know, so it's really nice just to have a you know a few days at the beginning of August with uh, the family. And I've been here. I play for a very big service uh, just on last Thursday evening for the the, the outgoing Bishop of of Gozo. Um, that was a very very impressive ceremony. So you know that was quite good. And um, as I said, now I'm here. I'm just about to go off to Vienna to conduct a new production of Four Game Best at the Theatre and the Wien. So that's uh, that's my, that's really, that's my news. Fabulous. How long will you be in Vienna, actually? I'll be there for just under two months. So Amazing. rehearsals and, and, uh, and performances. Um, I mean, it's quite, a, it's quite an undertaking because, of course, there's been a lot of changes since we, actually, since we last spoke, there's been a lot of changes because it was the, the Cape Town Opera Chorus was supposed to be performing, but, of course, due to the lockdown situation, because they can't, can't travel. So now we have a situation where we have um, uh, members of a company that took part in 2018-19 in London and Amsterdam, various places, who will be performing a kind of you know chorus and and uh, singing smaller roles. So it's going to be quite a different different oh, situation. Wonderful. Actually, I watched yesterday with great interest and, and great emotion. Actually, there was a wonderful performance from the Concertgebouw in Amsterdam with Andreas Nelsons of Rack Two. And to see, to see the orchestra playing again, I mean, all the string players had their own stands, the winds were very distant and so on. But just live music making, it, you know, it's, it's so fabulous to at least start, isn't it? To, to, to get back to the idea of, of musicians making music together in the same room as opposed to over a computer. It's, yeah, it, it's just it. great. What, what about in Vienna? What are you anticipating with social distancing and masks and so on? Well, there's going to be a lot of masks. I mean, we're in, and even for the, you know, for, the, for the singers, and we're all divided into, into various groups, you know, a red group, a yellow group, and a blue group, I forget now. Obviously, it's not, a, it's not going to be a, a massive orchestra, but I mean, we have a, yes. you know, a, a, a you know, the usual, the usual situations. I mean, it's yeah. This is something we all have to just live with. I mean, I suppose. You know, yes. I mean, I mean, as I said, it's been a real tragedy for a lot of things that have not happened, and absolutely, uh, you know, musicians are just not performing. And I mean, even talking about church music. I mean, I hear that in cathedrals in the UK, like Sheffield and Ripon, and yes. you know, no more cathedral choir. No, they lost their choirs or directors of music. I don't know. A lot, all sorts of things are happening. Choir schools closing. 
you know, it's got to get back to normality and let's, let's pray this gets back as soon as possible. Absolutely. It won't be quite the same, will it? But maybe it'll be even better. You know, maybe, once, yeah. Once, I'm, yeah, I'm very optimistic. I mean, there's going to be a, a, a big change, but I mean, I think that, you know, people are going to be very hungry for, for, for classical music. Absolutely. And, well, yeah, I mean, just music in general, performing. And so yes. it's going to be very interesting to see how this, um, yes. you know, you know, instigates the you know the attendance of the concert. absolutely. Yeah. Actually, at St John the Divine, I mean, the cathedral's closed until the fifteenth of January for public services and concerts. Really? Yeah, which I think, I mean, I really admire the dean for making this decision because you know everything we do at St John the Divine is uh, is big. I mean, you know, usually Christmas and. Christmas, Christmas Eve carols and New Year's Eve. I mean, there are 3,000 people in there and you just can't do that at the moment. So, um, you know, it's sort of reopening very, very gradually with some, uh, I mean, live stream services, of course, but, uh, and I'm live streaming a, a concert with the Vaughan Williams Fifth Symphony uh, transcription right. next month, which right. I've just transcribed, and also um, with uh, a wonderful violinist based in New York. Um, playing the Lark Ascending, which I think will just be beautiful, you know, violin and, and organ in that acoustic. And then, yeah. um, I mean, my big project really for the last two months has been making an organ transcription of Beethoven 9, which we're going to Ooh. offer in, in, as a heartfelt vote of thanks to all our medical professionals who, who have been absolutely incredible in New York City. And Great. that, I mean, God willing, will be on the 23rd of February, I think, but for organ and Three trumpets. Um, oh, timpani, of course, with a boom, boom, and and some percussion, and I think eight singers. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah we sing eight pros, and um, I, I'm going to sing the bass part. Of course, Freud. Uh, do you think I that'll be? We'll get a full cathedral. Oh no, we're not allowed a full <laughs> cathedral. <laughs> Yeah, um, but I'll, I'll employ you, don't worry. Yeah, exactly, thank you very much. I'll, I'll pass the audition. audition. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, in a, in a way we have a, a sort of inbuilt advantage because you know, in a building that can seat two and a half, three thousand people, uh, it, it is possible to social distance in there, you know, and... Uh, yeah, well, yes. Which is, which, which, is, which is great. So Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Um, that was, this was your idea, Doctor, I think. Yeah, it was mine. Well, it's such a, you know, it's a very interesting theme, isn't it? I mean, it's so easy. It's, you know, it's simple. It lends itself so, so brilliantly for, you know, for uh, all sorts of treatments. And yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's quite interesting how we, how we, you know, both uh, served our own dishes of, of improvisation with this. And I, lo I love what, I love what um, the, the improvisations you, you did, especially the one with the with the wreath, the wreath, I forget all the, those wonderful titles that you came up with. It's, uh, it's uh, one uh, mainly the mainly the wreaths, you know, it's all done by the and then you end on the on all the all the wreaths tutti and a big you know C major, this blast of the first two wreaths at the end. Yes, it's a really fun moment that actually the sound. Oh, really it's so kind. Well, it's just a bit of fun. Actually, the beginning of that, ba, 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 I was thinking about you know a group of people sitting around a campfire wearing sandals and smoking uh, rather dubious substances and drinking huge amounts of uh, of um, you know even more dubious substances and th that kind of atmosphere you know with the, and right. uh, lots of kind of animals and uh, things like this but uh, i think it is interesting to to juxtapose our own sort of styles i mean what about your i mean when you can tell in 5 seconds I think that it's you, you know, when you start. But where does that where does that come from? What do you think are the big influences? Who are your big sort of icons as as improvisers? Jazz musicians or organists well, maybe, or who? Yeah, yeah, jazz. I think. I mean, you know, I yeah. mean, look, when I was when I was at school in the early seventies, I mean, I was you know very much influenced by you know Virgil Fox as a as a, as a, as a player. Wonderful. And then, of course, you know, people like Stevie Wonder and all that sort of you know Earth, Wind and Fire, all of that sort of disco style you know i was really very much influenced by all that i mean it seems strange isn't it but i mean yeah it was a big change because you know, especially the yeah the, especially the harmony i can hear yeah, that. the harmony yeah yeah and well that yes of course and then of course you know people like olivia messiaen as well um master dupre and all these you know Vier, and all these wonderful composers and i suppose it's sort of you know this great sort of concoction of, of all sorts of different styles and you know the rhythm like, and 
It's like a big sort of melting pot. Big melting pot. That's it. Actually, yeah. the, the, you've just also highlighted something. Whenever I, whenever we do a concert together, I always on the top of my list where, when we've we spent a few hours together is that I really have to improve my rhythm because yours is yeah. so stunning. You shouldn't have said yes. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We can edit. We can edit this, or maybe we shouldn't. But um, but your, your rhythm. I'm, your rhythm is is very infectious, I think, and very, very. I mean, it's very, very individual, very, very driven. It's a jazz thing, really. I think that's what it is. Mean. Yeah. It's about sticking with a drummer and so on. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. I mean, I think my. Uh, I mean, I've. I don't know about you, and I bet it's the same. But I've always really preferred to improvise, ever since yeah. I was this high, uh, and yeah. I don't know. It's. It seems to me as though it's a completely natural. And it's sort of real music making in a way. You're not interpreting what somebody else has done. No. Um, mm -hmm. And I think really throughout my sort of as I was growing up, you know, when I was a choir boy uh, under Roy Massey at Birmingham Cathedral, I used to yeah. improvise on the piano in the style of Stanford and Parry and Wood, which was the music that I had in my ears at that That's time. Right. And then um, when, you know, I was at school, I loved, I got really into British composers, Walton and and Whitlock and Elgar. So I used to improvise in that style. Oh, and then, yeah. then uh, I started listening to a lot of Koshra, a lot of French improvisers, and started to really wanted to sort of assimilate the harmonic structures that they, they were using. So, um, and I think yeah. really it's been later on that, uh, I mean, you know, you, I think you do sort of develop in a way a personal style, uh, which, but I think it takes like a, composer it can take really a long time to come it genre. takes a while yeah you just have to just decide i mean for me it's mainly the jazz thing you know that's very much a sort of big aspect of it yeah and I, I, you know i mean you know of course uh i don't try to to improvise in any kind of you know to try to to emulate anybody it's just that it has to be my own style so you know yeah. for me it's mainly about the jazz and so that's the thing i bring yeah to, you know, to the, to, the, to the music and improvisation. Really. That's very interesting. I mean, I like, you know, to, to improvise in whatever it is, my own style. Um, yeah. But also, I, like, I enjoy it. And I think you can hear this on this, this video, improvising in, in a more historic styles as well. I think it, yeah. it's, it's a bit like the sort of um, Rory Bremner, you know. The, the, yeah. It's interesting, I think, people who improvise are often quite good mimics of other people. That, yeah. And, and uh, so... So I, I, I have sort of fun doing that, delving into, into other styles, which, I mean, of course, really in the history, of, in the history of music, it's great. Great. Words. Yeah, great. but it's all a bit of an illusion. I mean, if somebody was to write it, you know, that, that whatever it is, a sort of fugato on Twinkle Twinkle, it's all an illusion, you know, it's not exact, but it's, it's sort of right. to give, give the impression of a fugue, I guess. Yeah. That's it. And then it just, you know, it's just, uh, of course, the fascination here is, Having both of us doing something, you know, but on opposite sides of the of the coin, maybe. And, it's uh, interesting, you know, isn't it? And yeah, I mean, yeah. we should get onto the music. But I mean, one thing that really interests me actually is the kind of symbiosis between jazz harmony and impressionistic harmony. And I learned a couple of years ago. I think it was Danielle wrote who told me at Sansor Peace that apparently Debussy had a, a teacher at the Paris Conservatoire. I suppose it would have been well, let's say in the 1880s, wouldn't it? Uh, who was born in New Orleans. Isn't that mm -hmm. amazing? You know, he was, a, he was a jazz musician. And so uh, Debussy was very, very clearly uh, aware of what was happening with the jazz men, you know, in, in, in the South and, and obviously in New Orleans, which is the kind of, um, you know, the central hub yeah. of jazz, isn't it? But uh, isn't that fascinating? You know, things like, I suppose, the... The, you know, the dominance, the dominant ninth chords and the dominant elevenths and the kind of parallel movement of these chords and the use of different like whole tone scales and pentatonic scales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Debussy, Debussy started using in his orchestral music, you know, in the 1890s, but it, it had been done before by the jazzmans. Interesting. That's right, yeah. It's just interesting, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the kind of, of sound world that you latch onto, I suppose. I mean, you sort of just try to, yeah, you emulate it in some way, but then uh, it's how it, it's how you use it in your own improvisation. I think that's that's the thing that I think that's yeah. That's and I, I'm sure that you would 
you the same as me in, in a way it sort of comes from a place which you're born with and then yeah, that's you like... you kind of you in you inherit the sort of techniques if the harmonic techniques the, the structural techniques the contrapuntal techniques the finger technique um, yes. and and the uh, and uh, but i think it, it all originates and I, I feel this very strongly as a composer as well that it it comes from this kind of part that is quite deep inside you inside, and uh, yeah. and i think if um you know if people are trying to compose or improvise and it's not coming from that space you can kind of tell in five seconds really yeah you can yeah yeah i think it's i mean, it's a, I mean this this point how where it's coming to us you know i mean can improvisation be taught yeah, I get asked this all the time. Me too. And I have to say, quite honestly, quite frankly, no, it can't. Yeah, I don't think it can be called. Because yeah. um, I think it's something that you, it has to start, it has to start without the written page for a start. Yeah. And it has to start by, you know, the ears, it's, it, and you obviously, you, you, you inherit this kind of, you know, uh, sound world, which you then have to try to interpret and, Obviously, technique has got a lot to do with it. Yeah, but it's something you you can't really be taught these things. I mean, what is it, what is it that makes you improvise in a particular style or in, the, in this particular moment? That moment, you can't be taught that. Absolutely, it's something that happens. I mean. Yeah, and yeah. As you 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 take all these classical forms of music and you you bring all of that into that kind of melting pot, and then exactly, you know, it's, it's a plastic. I mean, we could talk hours about we absolutely it's such a fascinating subject isn't it Wayne just before we get to the music which we really must do but um just tell us so I did the visual side of this you know and uh, you very kindly sent me your files over the Atlantic uh which was great and then I did a few little stuff on on iMovie but just tell us a little bit about the pitch because we had an interesting uh, dichotomy there a couple of weeks ago when we tried to put this together yeah yes i mean the the organ the organ here in in um uh in the letters is, is a little bit sharper than the organ in, in st john the divine but um on the, the program i use for for just basic editing is sony sound forge and there is also a, a little section there called where you can actually adjust the pitch yeah. so what i did actually was to play your recording and then play mine and then i would just uh adjust um mine or your yes i'd actually adjust yours to suit mine a little bit that was what it was so you put my pitch slightly sharper is that right <laughs> yes yes that is. that's hilarious isn't it and listening to two at the same time is it because i've got it you know i can hear them both you know so it's very interesting to sort of you know to adjust it and just get it exactly right well, that, i know yes yeah. you certainly need quite a few paracetamol if you listen to it when they're not in tune, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, that was a bit. Uh, not really, yeah, yeah. But, yes. but you're good. On, you're good on the on the on the. I mean, you're good at all, at, at everything. I mean, my 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 strong point is is the is the audio side. I'm I'm terrible with all the visual side. I have no idea what to do with you know. Is that right, people. Wayne? Oh God, I've that, that needs another lifetime for me for that. Uh, 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 well, it's one of these things that, you know, uh, since COVID, since March, uh, it's uh, one of the things I've really enjoyed doing. It's sort of getting on yeah. top of the. Of the of the software, it's all quite good. Yeah, fun. yes. In some ways, with, with the broadcasting as well, that's something. Wonderful. Music, music, music. We need lots more of it. We do. We do. Talk, we need a lot. Talking of which, dom dom dim dom dum dum dum. Here it is. Take it away, doctor. Dum dum dim dum ya ba di da di ba da da dum. That was a great ending. <laughs> Hilarious. That was a good ending. Let me just press. It, it did record. It's on the list. Thank you. 